Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sport for today's Munster versus Ospreys preview. It is the URC quarterfinals. It is the business end of the competition and things all kick off with the current reigning champions getting their playoffs um, underway against a team that sort of snuck into the top eight. Um, they were kind of dismissed with Ospreys and uh, had a bit of a late run. And a couple of results going their way meant that uh, a win against Cardiff was enough for them to get themselves that final top eight spot and a chance to go to Thorn Park and try and dethrone Munster um, in, and, and, and try and, and make a bit of a charge for the URC. I don't see it happening personally. I mean, I think this Munster side is far too strong. But at the end of the day, an Osprey side playing for everything, you know, nothing to lose, everything to gain. Can't be written off. And this is the fun thing when it comes to, to sort of rugby uh, in playoff rugby is that, you know, there is a chance for upsets. There's the chance of, um, you know, big stories being made, you know, massive moments. And uh, you make yourself a bit of a hero as well. You know, you can put in those performances where people will say, remember that performance he put in against, you know, Munster to, you know, to win the quarterfinals. So it's 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 a kind of playoffs are where heroes are made for me. Uh, before we get into the two teams, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. We'll start with the Munster side, and it's been a pretty uh, consistent Munster side since basically that tour down to South Africa, where they played against um, uh, the Bulls and uh, the Lions. Again, two victories there. Um, the one, probably, you know, probably the reason that those victories, probably robbing uh, Bulls of the number one spot, so immensely important for Munster, and uh, robbing the Lions of a spot in the playoffs. So that's how significant those two games were. Uh, but in terms of the lineup, uh, not much has changed since then. So in the front row, it is Jeremy Lahman, Lachman, and Nas Gamel, and Stephen Archer. In the second row, it is Archer Sneeman, uh, next to Ty Byrne. I mean, what a lock combination that is. I don't think you really get much better than a lock combination than that, for example. Yeah, I mean, in terms of some of the best locks in the world, those two definitely within the top 10, arguably in the top five. I think Ty Byrne's probably the best uh, forward in the world in terms of a player that can play at the flank and and, 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 and lock and stuff like that. In terms of the most versatile uh, second row, back row, I think I don't think there's anyone better than him. Um, if you then look at the back row, it is Peter Armani, John Hodnett, and Gavin Coombs, who's topped all the various stats. He's, I mean, Gavin Coombs has had like, the most carries. Most meters gained, post contact meters. He's been an absolute workhorse uh, for Munster. He's been in absolutely brilliant form. Uh, so, plenty of physicality in that back row, which they'll be looking to try and almost bully Osprey, to be perfectly honest. Uh, in the uh, hot back combination, is um, Craig Casey next to Jack Crowley. Uh, you know, a lot of South African fans, I, I suggest you try and watch Jack Crowley this weekend because he is going to be the probably the flower half who will take on the spring box in about a month's time. So, if you want to get more information about him, if you didn't watch Six Nations, then he's really worth the watch. And uh, he was the hero last year. Uh, you know, those sort of uh, move from inside center to flower half towards the end in the playoffs, actually, and then beat the Stormers at flower half. Uh, the rest of the back line looks something like Shane Daly, Calvin Nash, and Simon Zebo at back. Simon Zebo bringing the, the sort of the curtain down his career. You know, every game he goes up for Manchester could be his last, and he'll be looking to try and go out with a trophy in the center. It will be Sean O'Brien next to the exciting Anton Frisch, who is French qualified and likely uh, and was going to play for France, but a very exciting player. Over there. Off the bench, it is Diamond Baron, John Ryan, and Oli Jaeger backing up that uh, front row. Then Jack O'Donoghue and Alex Kendlin uh, backing up the rest of the forwards. You've got the experienced Conor Murray next to Tony Butler and Mike Haley in terms of your reserve backline players. If you look at the men from Wales, they'll be captained by Justin Tipperick, who scored an absolutely phenomenal try uh, a, a week ago. So in the front row, it is Nicky Smith, Dewey Lake, and Tom Burta. You've then got uh, James Ratty, Hugh Sutton in the second row, Jack Morgan, Justin Tipperick, and Morgan Morris. A very, very impressive back row. Morgan Morris is somebody that a lot of people are you know, curious to why he didn't get caught up to, to Wales. Um, so he'll have a bit of a point to prove. We were Morgan Williams with partner Owen Williams, who uh, returns to the side uh, for the first time since they were knocked out of the, uh, the I think it's Champions Cup, uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, or about a month ago. So uh, international experience there. Owen Williams, very nice um, operator on his day. Keenan Giles has got a call up for, for Wales next to Luke Morgan and Max Nagy as the uh, uh, back three in the centers, it is Kieran Williams and Owen Watkin. Off the bench, it'll be Sam Parry, Gareth Thomas, Reese Henry, Victor Sefkete, the cheaters on a low knee, Morgan Morse, uh, Luke Davies, Luke Scully, and Harry Houston. Um, so in terms of my predictions for Munster versus Ospreys, I think that obviously Munster being the favorites, and, and I think that uh, I back them to go through. There's some nice players in there. You know, I think, you know, Ty Byrne and um, Pedro Armani, Arke Sneeman will be very important. They'll have a very good lineup threat. That set piece, I think they'll dominate. Um, I think Ospreys will be looking to try and ride a bit of emotion on the back of, you know, the fact that it was an amazing story for them just to get this far. Justin Tipperick's going to have to try and really get his troops up. A lot will ride on Owen Williams 
Um, if I get, were to give a score prediction, I'm thinking it's going to be about Manchester by about 10 would be my shot. It could be a lot more than that. It depends on what Osprey's side rushes up on the day and whether they are feeling um, like a potential upset. Um, so get your score predictions down in the comments below. Please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. And uh, we'll see you guys all next time.